Hi, I'm Dan, the Rare Coin Man, and I'm also the webmaster of RareCoins101.com. Today we're going to continue our series on sleeper coins. I think most of you are already familiar with what a sleeper coin is, but let me provide a quick review for those who may be new. Sleeper coin is a term often used to describe a coin that has traditionally been popular with collectors for a long time and in connection with that has a stellar record of price increases but <laughs> is currently priced below where it should be. <laughs> Stuff like that does happen in the world of coins. For example, a really great coin of numismatic significance that has been sluggish for quite some time or may have actually fallen in value in recent years certainly meets the definition of a sleeper coin. The good news about sleeper coins is that if past performance is any indicator, it will someday wake up with a vengeance and explode in value just like it has at intervals in the past. The sleeper coin we're going to study today is the 1864 two cent with the small motto. The 1864 two cent with the large motto is far more common and less valuable so the distinction between the small and the large motto is crucial. Now what is the wording on the motto we're talking about here? Well, that brings us to another reason why this coin is so special. The 1864 two cent is the very first United States coin to bear the motto, in God we trust, an observance that has carried forward to our coinage of the modern day. The two cent coin was an odd denomination that didn't stick around for long. So in this video, we're going to explain how it came to be and what led to its demise. We'll also be studying value trend charts that demonstrate why the 1864 two cent small model coin qualifies, in my opinion, as a sleeper coin. And no conversation about this coin would be complete without mentioning why the motto, In God We Trust, was embraced in the coin's design. This is one of those occasions where we're going to have to once again buckle up in our time-traveling machine and go back in time more than 160 years ago to see what was happening in America. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Well, let's get to it. Okie dokie. To understand how the two cent coin came to be in 1864, well, <laughs> it, it didn't happen all at once. So I'll try to summarize as best I can. The American Civil War, sometimes known as the War Between the States, began in April 1861 when Southern forces opened fire at the federal position at Fort Sumter in Charleston, South Carolina. A couple of years into the war, most coinage had vanished from circulation as people held on tightly to gold and silver as a safe harbor during those perilous, uncertain times. If the war went badly, it was feared, government paper money might become worthless. Even copper and nickel coins were being hoarded. Consequently, the lack of circulated coinage caused many complications in the channels of commerce. Frustrated by the lack of federal coinage, numerous enterprising individuals in the private sector experimented with a bold innovation. Strike tokens made of bronze, a relatively cheap alloy consisting of copper, tin, and zinc. The tokens were valued at one cent in goods, services, or money, and often carried patriotic themes or advertised a business. Most of the Civil War tokens, as we call them nowadays, were the same diameter as the U.S. cent, but were thinner and lighter, as this slide illustrates. 
Despite their metallic intrinsic value being well below one cent, the tokens were readily accepted as a medium of exchange by the coin-starved public. Up until this time, authorities at the United States Mint in Philadelphia had incorrectly presumed underweighted, undervalued coins would be rejected in commerce. The popularity of bronze tokens convinced the Mint to adopt the same concept. As a bonus, bronze was more ductile and malleable than the copper-nickel alloy of the Indian had sent, making it easier to work with and thus less costly to manufacture. The Coinage Act of 1864 allowed for the production of bronze Indian head cents. Also, in order to get more pocket change into the public's hands faster, a bronze two-cent coin was likewise authorized. For the two-cent coin, mint engraver James B. Longacre designed an obverse dominated by a shield. For the reverse, Longacre came up with a simple wreath encircling the face value of the coin. The first shield two-cent coins were struck on April 22, 1864. The Mint initially used a prototype die featuring small letters for the In God We Trust motto. This prototype was quickly replaced by dies having larger letters and these larger letter dies struck the vast majority of the nearly 20 million two cent coins released in 1864. As these photos illustrate, it's rather easy to distinguish between the small and large model varieties. The large model letters are clearly taller than what you see on the small model. Many sharp-eyed, experienced collectors can tell them apart even without a magnifying lens. We don't know how many with the small model were produced, but the number was most assuredly very small compared to the overall total. PCGS estimates only about 10,000 examples of the small model variety exist today. Now that's a lot compared to say a U.S. gold coin from the 1790s, but it's not nearly enough to go around for everybody who wants one. A good thing is that at least it's still fairly affordable to a wide range of collectors. You could still get a really a nice example for under a thousand dollars. At first, the two cent coin was greeted by the public with great enthusiasm because it helped alleviate the coin shortage plaguing the nation. But after the war, when coins began circulating normally again, the need and the demand for the two cent coin fell dramatically and its mintage tailed off accordingly. Its last year of production was 1873. Now that we've examined the circumstances leading up to the introduction of the Shield Two Cent Coin in 1864, we're now ready to explore how it came to be the motto in God We Trust was added to the coin's design. This is where it gets really interesting. As we touched upon a few minutes ago, the American Civil War began at 4.30 in the morning on April 12, 1861, when the Confederates opened fire on Fort Sumter. With supplies and munitions exhausted, the fort's Union defenders had no choice but to surrender two days later. Amazingly, there were no battle casualties on either side. As the bugle sounded, men from all walks of life in the North and South rush to join the military. As they amassed great armies, cheered on by the civilian population, both sides were confident of victory in a short conflict. The North and South met on the battlefield for the first time on July 21, 1861, near the small town of Manassas Junction, Virginia, some 25 miles west southwest of Washington, D.C. 
Seemingly, no one knew what to expect. Civilians in Washington, dressed in their best Sunday clothes, rode out in their carriages with picnic baskets and champagne as spectators to watch the events unfold. What happened next horrified everyone. In what became known as the First Battle of Bull Run, the South routed the Northern Army. The retreat to Washington was a disaster, but the Confederates were too disorganized and exhausted to march on Washington. There was no more talk of a short conflict. The hardships of war were felt on both sides of the Mason-Dixon line. As thousands upon thousands of men were dying on the battlefield with no relief in sight, people began to lose hope for an earthly solution to the death and devastation, and increasingly turned their eyes upward to heaven, placing their trust in Almighty God for help during this horrible crisis. As faith in a divine intervention spread throughout the country, it eventually reached the office of Treasury Secretary Salmon P. Chase. Chase may have first come to favor a reference to God on the nation's coinage after he received a letter in eight, late 1861 from Reverend Mark R. Watkinson of Bridleyville, Pennsylvania. In his letter, Reverend Watkinson urged that an, an arrangement be made for the recognition of the Almighty God in some form on our coins to express national reliance upon heavenly support. Chase agreed and ordered the inclusion of a godly motto on a U.S. coin. In his letter to Mint Director James Pollock, Chase wrote, No nation can be strong except in the strength of God, or safe except in His defense. The trust of our people in God should be declared on our national coins. You will cause a device to be prepared without unnecessary delay with a motto expressing in the fewest and best words possible this national recognition. Chase may have written without unnecessary delay, but it did take several years for the process to play out. Several mottos of different wording were considered, but in the end, the motto, In God We Trust, was selected to be inscribed on the two-cent coin. Starting in 1866, the motto was placed on most gold and silver coins. So, now you know how the In God We Trust motto was placed on U.S. coinage, a long tradition that has carried forward to the present day. A common misconception, I believe, is that the Coinage Act of 1864 mandated the motto to appear on U.S. coinage when, in fact, the Act simply gave Treasury officials discretionary authority concerning inscriptions on the nation's minor coins. Actually, the motto inscription wasn't required until a law went into effect in 1908. But even then, it pertained only to gold and silver coins. And finally, in 1955, legislation was enacted requiring the motto on all United States coins. All right, now that we've talked about the history of the 1864 two cent, let's change gears, and look at value trend charts to see why it qualifies as a sleeper coin. What do you say? Okay, so here we are at the homepage for rarecoins101.com. To get to the chart for the 1864 two cent small model, first you've got to click this link right here, key date coin list. And that will take you to the key date coin list. And this is where you find all the coins that are recommended uh, because of their very strong price increases over a long period of time. Now let's just skip all the introductory material and go straight down to the list. And the key date coin list is actually broken up into four different groups. The first group I call good. It's got this lighter green color. These coins have done really well over a long period of time as far as price advancements. The next group is called the better group. 
as the name implies, it's done. These coins are done even better than the ones in the good group, and it's got a darker green. The third group is called the best group, and these coins, the smallest group of all, have done the best, and it has associated with this dark green color. Then we have the classic rarities group, and this group has a lot of really great coins, coins that collectors have loved for many decades, but haven't risen in value much in recent years, or maybe have actually lost a bit in value, and therefore they have lower trend line averages that prevent them from joining one of the three green groups above. And there are a lot of sleeper coins in the classic rarities group. Okay, let's find the 1864 two cent small model coin. All right there it is. All right, click that, and we'll go to a page. It's dedicated to the, uh, to the 1864 Shield 2 cent coin. Now let me close this ad here. That's another thing. Um, I do have ads on my, on my website. I am trying to make a few dollars on this site. I'll be honest with you, but I promise not to bury you in all these ads. There's nothing more annoying than going to a website where they've got so many ads coming at you that you can't even find the content. So I purposely limit the amount of ads that you're exposed to. So and for that, for the ads I do have, I, I, I'm sorry. I apologize if they're annoying you. But okay, back to business here. So this is all the history of the uh, coin. We've already covered that. We're going to go down here to the uh, chart. And here, this chart here is uh, for fine. It shows the value trends from 1990 estimated retail prices from 1990 to 2024. And this chart here is for the coin in fine condition. So it starts here in 1990, the estimated retail value was $90. And by 2024, it had risen to $425. Now the trend line slope, I touched upon that earlier, it's an indicator of how strongly the coin is rising in value over time, uh, over the time horizon studied, in this case, 34 years. Now, the steeper this line and the bigger the trend line slope number, the better the coin is done. So starting in 1990 and going for about the next 10 or 12 years, the pr prices were really pretty flat. Then over an eight-year period, they basically doubled, but hasn't done much, if anything, since 2012. Now you've got other grades here that you can look at. You've got the very fine, you know, extremely fine, about uncirculated, mint state 60, brown, and their numbers are, are a little lower. Uh, they haven't done as well as the uh, coin in fine condition has done, which just goes to show you, you don't always have to buy top grades to, to have a nice coin that will uh, increase nicely in price. If the, if the numismatic fundamentals are there, the coin will do well even in circulated or well-circulated conditions. That's, that's always been true. And you can look at this chart here and it compares the grades from 1990 to 2024, how well they've done. And the finest in black there has done the best. So, and then here's an interesting chart for you to look at. It shows uh, this, how the estimated value trends have done going all the way back to 1950. And it's very interesting to see how well this coin has risen in value during those years. Rising values is the legacy of this coin. When you average the trend line slope numbers for all five grades, the trend line average is 9.77 for the 1864 two cent small motto. To qualify for either the good, better, or best groups, the trend line average has to be at least 13. The fact that this coin hasn't done much as far as price increases are concerned for more than 10 years is how it ended up in the classic rarities group. Now, I'll continue to monitor prices and update these charts. Don't be surprised when this coin wakes up and enjoys another price explosion similar to what we've seen in the past and moves up to a higher green group. You see now why, in my opinion, the 1864 two cent small motto is a sleeper coin.
One of the things I was curious about the 1864 two cent small model was, when did coin dealers and collectors start recognizing these small and large motto varieties? I was hoping maybe I could easily find research someone else had already done to answer that question, but I couldn't find anything, so I decided to do my own investigation. Thanks to the digital archives of the American Numismatic Association and the Newman Numismatic Portal, the earliest mention I could find where the small and large mottos were recognized was 1914. So it took quite a while, from what I can see, before the distinction was observed and noted. After the varieties were finally recognized, I imagine it didn't take long to realize it was the small motto that was much more difficult to find, making it a big hit with collectors. One of the sayings we collectors use a lot is that with coins, you can literally hold history in your hands. I don't think the saying is overused at all because it is so true. However, in the case of the 1864 two cent coin, this statement has never been more true. For one thing, the 1864 two cent was born directly from the turmoil of the Civil War, arguably the most consequential event in American history. Secondly, it was the very first United States coin to inscribe the motto, In God We Trust, the beginning of a tradition that remains a fixture in our coinage today. For these reasons, the 1864 two cent, with emphasis on the small motto variety because of its relative scarcity, has won a special place in the hearts of collectors, and in that we trust will forever be. That's all I've got today. We'll be continuing the series on sleeper coins with more videos in the future. If you thought this video was worthwhile, please be sure to subscribe so you won't miss out on any future episodes. Also, please be sure to click the like button because you know what, <laughs> that, that really helps me. Thanks for joining me. Until next time, this is Dan the Rare Coin Man signing off. Happy collecting!